works. In this video, we're going to be looking at a code generation use case uh, for prompt engineering. Now, the problem we're going to be trying to ta tackle is the problem of creating a simple Python function that calculates uh, uh, some operation between two numbers. All right. And the reason why we define a very simple task is because we're not really concerned about the code that's being generated, but the process to use large language models to generate that code and how that can come about leveraging those steps that we've discussed previously. So task definition to generate Python code that can you know, produce a function that calculates, that takes in two integers and, and a string that represents an operation and then returns the result of that operation. Okay. So for our evaluation metric, uh, we're going to be using test cases. So essentially here, there are many ways that we could do this. And there are many different ways that we could evaluate the, um, uh, the quality, let's say, of the code generated. However, for to simplify things, what I want is just to generate code, to test it against some uh, pretty well-defined set of test cases, where if that function or that piece of code passes those test cases, that means that we can trust that, you know, that function will be reliable. This is not absolutely perfect, obviously, and there are many, th there are many ways that we could expand on top of this. But what I want to introduce is this concept of developing code by having test cases that have, you know, example inputs and outputs, and then testing the code generated by some large language model by running the function generated by that model against the test cases predefined. All right. So in this case, uh, I'm going to set a set of test cases where the function is called calculate. So it takes in uh, a number like five and three, and then so the add symbol and the output, the expected output is eight. And you do the same thing for a few examples. And here we could have many, many, many examples and many different conditions where we want to see the function uh, work well, like for example, uh, handling other types of potential errors and exceptions, etc. However, to simplify things, we're just going to have the test cases to be some simple use, some simple uh, examples. All right. And now we generate the prompts, right? And we're going to have two prompts, one for the system message of the model and one for the prompt that will generate the code. So for the system message of the model, we're going to want a Python code generation engine. And we're going to say you'll be fed prompts with code descriptions or have finished code and generate the appropriate Python code for the problem task described. All right. And the prompt to generate the code will be generate this entire Python function. And then I start the function and I continue the completion of the function by having these, uh, you know, HTML style backticks which uh, is an approach that's known as structure prompting. We've looked at this a little bit when we, we've discussed um, output indicators. So this is just a very fancy type of output indicator where I exemplify the structure in which I want the response to, to be. And this is actually uh, inspired by a very famous tweet by Riley Goodside, who is known um, as the first ever prompt engineer. And I really like some of his tweets. I like how he thinks about prompt engineering. You should check him out at at Goodside, if I'm not mistaken. And this was inspired by his initial tweet uh, for structured generation of Python code using large language models. So here I'm saying one line doc string for a Python function to perform my arithmetic operations, then a white space, then some code, and then the return statement for that function. So the only Python code inside of this uh, prompt is this line. And we want to generate some code out of that. Now, this is an approach that I like because uh, when we know what we want, we can start the process for the model to simplify the completion. Remember when we talked about task specification that we want the prompt to constrain the model towards fulfilling the task, right? So this is what I'm trying to do here. So this is going to be the prompt that we have. And then for the experimentation process, it's going to be very simple. So I have here the setup for the uh, for calling the ChatGPT API. So I I input the system message for the model. I input the prompt and I get the answer. And here I'll be using GPT-4. Now notice here that we're going to be doing a simplified version and, and we're not going to go through the process of setting 
parameters at the beginning and having an entire prompt engineering experiment pipeline with tables and so on, because we just want to see how the code generation would differ in terms of how we would inspect that the output is correct and you know potentially how an iteration would look like. So this is going to be a very simplified example. So I generate the Python code, right? And if I print it with Markdown, this is what I get. Here's the complete Python function as requested. And I have here the function that uh, was returned by the model. All right. So it's pretty good. I'd say it's, it looks pretty nice. However, you notice that this is Markdown, right? Which means that we need to extract just the Python code from here. There are many ways to do this. Uh, we saw in the video about structured outputs that we could use Pydantic. In Langchain, they have output parsers specialized for extracting Python code from, um, uh, from the outputs of a model like GPT, ChatGPT. However, to simplify things, we're just going to do a very simple regex extraction of that Python code. And when we do that, it, this is what it looks like. If so I let's run this again. So I'm running this not live because this is recorded, but I'm running this right now. And all right, perfect. So we get that function. And now I'm going to generate the Python code. I'm going to get the Python code and I'm going to just print it here so that you take a look. So now we got just the Python code. Perfect. And now I'm going to execute the Python code. So I'm going to be using Python's exec method to execute the code that was generated by the model. Now, remember, this is for demonstration purposes and executing untrusted code is something that you have to be very careful about because that can lead to issues because the model might generate some code that you might not want to run on your machine. So usually we would do this in an isolated environment or in a sandbox environment. And there are many different approaches on how to set that up. However, just to simplify things, this is just a simple calculation app. I'm going to be running this code right now. And when I run the code, it means that now I will have access in the environment of my uh, Jupyter notebook access to this function called calculate. So when I run this, I can now, without having specified in a traditional Jupyter Notebook cell, I can run this code and test it to see if it's working. So as you can see, it's working great and it's making the calculation that I wanted. So I don't need this one anymore. And now that I have that function executed and implemented in my environment, I can actually um, uh, do a unit test to check that the uh, the function passes the test cases that I define. Remember, this is the evaluation metric. This is what I use to define whether or not this is acceptable for use or not. So when I run this, I get a mistake because I didn't import unit test. So let's import unit test. Perfect. So uh, when I run these tests, when I run this test, I get that it works great and it passes my tests. So this would be the criteria for me to say, okay, this is perfect. This is actually uh, running the task correctly. Now, the way to iterate and evolve on this would be to, if I want to add functionality, I would add tasks and then prompt the model to generate that function and then test it against the test that I prepared as the evaluation metric for that functionality and then incorporate that. So have a model that can, you know, refactor the code and add it and add more stuff and then run a set of tests, make sure that they pass the tests and so on and so forth until a point where I can, you know, make a PR, push, etc. cetera. Uh, so obviously um, there's a lot of more complexity that we can add to that. And there are a couple of papers that are really interesting. One is called uh, AI Driven Development that came out uh, earlier this year. And another one that's been uh, very popular recently is Alpha Codium that essentially try to look at what an AI driven development pipeline would look like and it's extremely interesting because it builds on top of these simple ideas of having models to generate code and then having this code run against tests and then having a pipeline for checking that um, the, the code is appropriate and so on and so forth. So I definitely recommend you check those papers out. And that's it for this video. Uh, on the next video, we're going to be looking at a fun demo on how to understand research papers using uh, prompt engineering. So see you there. Cheers.